All right. Hi, Mike. Uh, could you please just give an introduction for everybody? <laughs> I'm Mike L. Murphy, and I've been animating for 15 years. Uh, my first film was Iron Giant. I went to CalArts, and, and uh, that's it. Been, <laughs> yeah, animated fool. I love it. Nice. My, 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 my girl. <laughs> Um, okay, what would you say have been the highlights of your career? The highlights? Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me get into that. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've had kind of a few careers at this point. So, yep. my since we're talking about animation, yep. my animation career, probably the coolest thing was getting my first job. Mm. And um, do you want me to go into the story? or? Yeah, sure, go for it. Assistance? Yeah, yeah, whatever you feel is best. <laughs> cool, all right. Well, I, I had gone to Cal Arts, and when I was 17, my um, actually when I was 16, there was a wedding at my house, and I had some artwork on the wall, and one of the guests of the wedding, she's like, hey, do you want to be an animator? And I was like, Ooh, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I actually wanted to be a film director, but yeah. I, you know, at 16, this is before the internet, so yeah. like, if you wanted information on filmmaking or animation, <laughs> you were pretty much hosed. The only info I could get was Preston Blair's book, I, I wish I could. I'd probably have it around here somewhere. Yeah. Where you learn like walk cycles and bouncing balls, and it's yeah. I love that book. And that yeah. was pretty much all I had yeah. to go off of. So this lady comes to my house, and I know that I want to make movies, but I have no idea how to get there. And she's like, Disney. My brother works there. Would you like a tour? And I said uh, yes. So I, I went to, down to uh, Glendale. This is before the Hat Building. Yep. And went down to Glendale, and I was only supposed to be there for like. A lunch period, right? And yeah. I ended up staying for two days. Damn. My mom would drive <laughs> She's like, do you need me to pick you up? I'm like, no, I'm here all day. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. And they were doing Latin at the time. Oh, man. Yep. It was so cool. And I remember one of the guys, they had this one animator kind of tucked away in the corner, and he had, like, his little computer. And he's like, check it out. I got CG animation. I'm like, what's that? I had yeah. no idea. This is, like so long ago yeah and they did the tiger head that comes out of the sand oh yes it was all cg and i yep. just remember going oh that was rad like, i think most of it was hand drawn but there was yep. one part where it was cg with the, the sands coming out yeah and i was like that is amazing and then they showed me the carpet and how they're using computer animation for that yep. and i just thought that's that's pretty interesting i want to i want to do this and I, and I had just gotten a computer and i thought i think I think that's where the future is going to be for animation. Yep. I think it's going to be computers. Yep. So long story short, if I wanted to work at Disney, I had to get a job at Cal Arts. Yep. I applied and they said, "Hey kid, you uh, uh, you missed the boat. We're not accepting new people." And I was like, "You're gonna take me." <laughs> so like a week later, I was very persistent and tenacious. Yeah. And about a week later, I got this little envelope and I'm like, "Oh man, wow. it's like a reject. It's just a little tiny envelope." Yeah, that can't be good. Yeah, I open it up and it's like, dear Mr. Murphy, we would like to inform you. I'm like, this, this isn't sounding good. Yep, it's inform you that you're accepted. I was like, holy crap! <laughs> this is great. But the problem was, is I still have one year of high school to go. Oh wow! So I had a, yeah, I had to drop out of high school to uh, pursue my dreams of being an animation nerd. That's freaking and awesome. And so I went to Cal Arts, and Cal Arts was really awesome, but they didn't really focus on drawing. Mm. They focused on animating, which was why I was going there, but I, I wasn't, and I'm still not the best draftsman, I mean, there's pretty, I'm, I'm all right now, because yeah. like, I forced myself to do it, but it's not my natural state, Yeah. where there are guys I went to school with, they were like 18, and they, they were, like, their drawings were sick, you cry, yeah. they were yeah. so talented, <laughs> those guys are all, like, being character designers, and just, just amazingly talented guys, yep. so I, uh, long story short, I... It, at Cal Arts, realized that my niche that I wanted to focus on is character animation. Obviously, you know you can do a character animation, effects animation, be a rigger, you can be a modeler, mm -hmm. development artist, background. You know, there's a million things you can do within the confine of being an animator. Yeah. But I, I really liked performance and I liked characters, mm -hmm. and so I I had graduated from Cal Arts, mm -hmm. and my last year I made this long ass film. It was like seven minutes long and it had a cast of like four dozen characters <laughs> yeah. and I, I was really happy because I got all my buddies to d animate individual shots and I was like yeah I'm like a little mogul this is great yeah. <laughs> I, was, I bit up more than I could chew mm. and the film a lot of people actually really like the film but I think as a whole 
it was just a big mess. It had like ending sequence. I'll probably post it one day. The ending yeah. sequence was really cool. It's like this. Uh, it's it's a trivia film, mm. but everybody really liked it. But the film as a whole didn't work. Mm. And all my buddies got off, you know, like graduated, and they all got job offers to work at Disney. And I was mm. just like, well, I don't have yeah. nobody offering you crap. <laughs> yeah. I didn't make it. Long story short. Yeah. So I actually went back to Cal Arts. Uh, the following year, this is after I graduated, I was homeless. I was living in a sleeping bag in this abandoned cubicle up on the second floor. And I, because, I, again, this was before computers, so if I wanted to do animation, I had to be at either CalArts, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Sheridan College in Canada, or RISD in, um, in Rhode Island. And mm-hmm. other than that, if I wasn't working for a studio, mm-hmm. I was I was hosed. I wasn't going to do anything. Wow. So I... Um, I went back and I did this short film, mm. and I really had a focus of what I wanted to accomplish, which was getting a job. That was the first thing. Second, getting a job as a as a character animator. Mm. So the film was based solely off that. It was purely a marketing tool to get me the work that I wanted. And mm. after, right when I was finishing that film, John Lasseter came. Nobody knew who this guy was. He was doing Listerine commercials on Mars. I'm like, oh yeah, I think he did some cool short films, but that's it. Yeah. So he comes and he's like, I got this animated CG movie called Toy Story. We're like, you know, we're all like little assholes. So we're like, yeah. oh, we're going to slam it. So we're all in the theater like, yeah, this is going to suck. CG yeah. animation. Toy Story starts and at the end of the movie, we're just like, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh. yeah. Yeah, you do your animation all the, day, all the time, but yeah. back then, it's just like, I was blown away, and wow. I was like, that is the future, it's all going to be CG, yep. and all my buddies were like, what are you talking about, that'll never fly, mm. so the first time I finished my short, and uh, I, I applied to Disney to work on Dinosaur, because mm. they obviously knew that CG was going to be going, so they, their second movie after uh, Toy Story was Dinosaur, mm. which was CG, yeah. and I applied to them, and I remember the director, Eric Layton, called me up, and he's like, hey dude, we're not going to hire you, I'm like, what? Come on! <laughs> Your animation is so great. Your 2D is so charming and cool that we have forwarded you over to the 2D department. They want to hire you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, so my dream my whole life to do, to be a 2D animator for Disney, but yeah. I'm not feeling it. It's CG. And he's like, well, yeah. you don't have any CG experience. Mm-hmm. We don't. We're all filled up in our training department, so mm-hmm. you just missed the ball. And I'm like, oh great. Damn. So long story short, I was kind of hosed, and then I pulled some shenanigans. To um, I called up Rhythm and Hughes, mm. and they they were actually had a pretty robust training department for CG, mm. and I pretty much was like I called up the head recruit with the head animator, and I said, hey, we met um, back at Cal Arts last year, and he said when I got my film done, mm. you'd like to see it. He obviously didn't remember. He's like, oh yeah, all right, kid, <laughs> and I was like. My, um, my portfolio mm. is actually at the front desk. Mm. Yeah, I've been sitting there for two months and nobody even bothered to look at it. I kept calling every week and HR was like, oh, we'll take a look. With it. So finally mm. I was like, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to, this isn't working. Yeah. So I called, I, I told him that um, it was at the front desk. And he's like, oh, I'll take a look at it. Well, I know what that means. So mm. I, I hung up with him and I called the front and I said, hey, I just talked to dude. He wants he wants you to walk this down to his office. Like, <laughs> Five minutes. Dude calls me up. He's like, "You're hired." I'm like, "Oh, Whoa, so man, <laughs> you gotta like, you gotta like work around things." Yeah. And they hired me, and literally the day I was done in training in CG training, so I had like a couple little shots of on my reel that were computer based. Mm. Uh, I got called into the president's office, mm. and he's like. Actually, it wasn't the president. It was this lovely guy, um, Paul. He was running the CG department, and he's yeah. like almost crying. He's like, I've never had to let someone go. I'm like, it's cool, dude. I'm like, yeah. I'm cons- he's got to lay me off, and I'm consoling him. I'm like, don't worry. I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, for sure, by the time I get out of his office, everyone in recruiting knew, or the training department knew that I'd just been laid off because there, there was like no work at our age, but they were lovely enough to hire me just because they're like, we know that you're, you're going to be good. And I wanna, mm-hmm. want you so all the recruiters called up all the other recruiters at all the major studios, and the next day I was flown up to Pixar for Toy Story 2. And I, these were job offers. So yeah. Pixar, Toy Story 2, ILM for a Star Wars Episode 1, Damn. and then Warner for Iron Giant. Yeah. So I had three 
me job, like my dream studios were giving me my dream job, and I'm just like, and this is like my first real job out of college, and like, yeah. so I had a pick, and yeah. Brad Bird had come to Cal Arts a few times, and every year he gave like, he gave a random talk about story. Nobody else talked about story. And he's like, yeah. this is how you open movie. This is what acting's all about. This is why, you know, he just like blew my mind, and, yeah. and I just went, that dude's the man, and yeah. I want to learn from him. So I turned down Toy Story 2, and everyone's like, you dick, why would you turn down? <laughs> so I'm like, plan. Yep. And I turned it on, and it was like, you, you can work on Star Wars. And I'm yeah. like, don't, you know, plan. And I went to Warner Brothers, mm. and that gave me, you know, like that was the basis. So watching Brad Bird direct, and, and I kept, I'd always pick his brain about stuff. I mm. probably annoyed the hell out of him, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. He, he put up. He was a, he's a good guy. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, that kind of started my career. And then ever since I worked on that, and I was so beloved in the animation industry, I kept getting hired wow. and getting more and more acting shots. And yeah. that culminated with Lord of the Rings, where I went down, and uh, Richie Bainham, who's the animation supervisor on that, <laughs> was anim super on uh, Scooby-Doo, yeah. and he kept pumping me up. I, I was working with him on that. He, like, every day, we go to lunch, he's like, come on, he's a little Irish guy. He's like, yeah. you gotta, I'm actually, I'm butchering his <laughs> <laughs> And animate column. I'm like, no, oh, dude, I, I just started directing commercials. I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna be here for commercials. You gotta, and finally, after about two months mm. of him just hammering away at me, I'm like, Richie, I'll do it. Yeah. You never ask me ever again. He goes, all right, deal. <laughs> I plane down to New Zealand, and I was only supposed to stay for about four months, and I ended up staying for two and a half years. Wow. Stretch of time. Yeah. But the reason I stayed so long is, A, because Weta was actually amazing, and watching Peter Jackson direct was phenomenal. Great learning experience. It was like grad school for me, and yeah. I never really experienced visual effects. I'd always been doing character uh, feature animation, Disney yeah. style, Pixar style. Yeah. So I got to watch them make The Lord of the Rings, which mm -hmm. ultimately won Oscars for, for the effects. So I was like part of this elite mm -hmm. visual team, and they had this intro web where they had each shot and then the progress, each version. So mm -hmm. as an artist, you do your comp or you do your animation, and it would track. So every night after I went home, I would sit there and I'd go through that shot tree and snoop around. Yeah. Watch all the different elements. Wow. So I'm on, on, in two years of Lord of the Rings, mm. I got I got every visual effects shot in there. Mm. I know it by heart. Mm. I, I think it's because of this. Yeah. But I know the element and how they did it. Mm. So yeah, so I, I shot a bunch of short films down there. Mm and hired the whole crew, the visual effects and, and the miniature crew, mm. to make my shorts. So I really got a good training in live action filmmaking and mm. visual effects. And then I came back to LA, got a job at Disney as an animator, and, which was my childhood dream, which was, was just fantastic to be at Disney yeah. and you're walking through the hallways and Keen's like, what's up, Mike? Oh my God, I'm going. <laughs> And they have a board there where you can go and you can see any bit of animation art you want. So I'd be like, wow. hey, I'd like the scene of Pinocchio where, you know, and they're like, okay, one second, and I have this thing in my hands. Oh my like, God, yeah. <laughs> so cool, and on the, the hallways have like the original art, and it's just like fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. But I ultimately realized that at Disney, that just wasn't my place. Mm -hmm. I had too much anime, uh, live action experience at that point. Mm -hmm. so. A great place, I love it. It just wasn't quite the right fit for me because mm -hmm. I'd been directing and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I wanted to do other things. So I left there and I became an animation director yeah. uh, for a bunch of commercials and short films. And at the same time, you're doing freelance, not consistent work. So at the mm -hmm. same time, I started becoming a previous supervisor. So a good friend of mine, Tor Frenthal, he went off and uh, he was all he was directing commercials um, and he went and he got him, uh, his first movie called uh, Hotel for Dogs a DreamWorks movie hmm. a feature of action and he brought to be uh, he wanted me to do Previs hmm. so I was like cool hmm. I never used so I got teamed up with a company called Proof hmm. and I was basically sitting there with tour and we did this whole opening of the movie that actually never got filmed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with but I got a really good 
case of Previs, mm -hmm. and loved working with me, so they kept hiring me lots. So I did Previs for about five or about five years, where mm -hmm. I was flopping between Previs super super Previs designing and Previs yep. supervisor super. I can't say it. Yep. <laughs> My coffee's. Um, so I'd be doing that, and I'd also be animation directing, and I'd also be mm. directing commercial. I kind of had wow. three different careers for a five year span. Yeah. And also, um, during that time, I've been developing features. So mm. I'm not a feature writer per yeah. se. I guess if you put a gun to my head, I could probably write a script. <laughs> I know people who are like top screenwriters, yeah. and um, I've been collaborating with them, mm -hmm. and we're coming up with some really awesome scripts. But mm -hmm. you know, it's development. If, if I had 200 grand to pay them, they would have a script in about two months. But when you're done, you're just kind of, in, you know, you're making a movie with your buddies. Mm -hmm. It takes a while. so. Mm -hmm. Story short, I did all that, and now I am. I, I started doing lectures and teaching college uh, animation classes, mm -hmm. and everybody just keeps emailing me asking for 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 advice and, and mentoring. And so I thought, there's no way that I can individually mentor all the people who are asking. I just don't physically have the bandwidth. So yeah. I started getting into internet marketing yeah. and learning how I can take my t teachings and automate them online so you're getting the best of me mm -hmm. but it's not taking up all my time so I'm mm -hmm. still free to mentor for people but also to make movies and as I make movies to, to share that, that back so it's a really great way of creating a community so mm -hmm. that's uh, that's why you asked me my highlight <laughs> yep. it's like cool things that I've done that yeah. it's really hard for me to pinpoint but I think my favorite movie that I've worked on has uh from a from a work experience was Osmosis Jones because really wow <laughs> you know and and mm. we and the character I was on Drix and he had like one arm mm. very mouth no legs mm. so they gave me a shot and and because they there were too many animators CG animators on it the, the 2D guys they were like crazy mm. you know, crazy CG guys there were about 14 of us mm. and Drix was maybe 20 minutes of the movie, and because he was so simple to animate, we played through. So they give me a shot, mm -hmm. and it would be doing things, and I literally would get it done in two hours. Wow. Like, what do we do? Yeah. So we just hang out the whole time. We go down and play pool, and, <laughs> and you know. The, 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 the studio was in the mall. Yep. So we go down and hang out in the mall, check chicks out. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so that was a you know, like Friday yeah. at like 3, I'm like, ah, it's 3 o'clock Friday. And we all... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was just a really cool, chill, uh, laid-back experience. Yeah. And then probably the second one would be uh, Iron Giant, just because it was my yes. first movie, and I was just like sucking it all up. So yeah. amazing. And and also Lord of the Rings, which actually wasn't that fun to work on mm. because I was flown in to work on the second film, mm. and they were they were backlogged. They had too many shots. And they were up against the deadline, and that's why Richie was like, "You gotta come down," because he knew I was fast and I could deliver. Yeah. And we had nobody had really done Gollum yet. They were mm -hmm. just doing some tests, so I got there, and they were trying to do the mocap, and it wasn't working. And so uh, they just started giving me shots, and I would just sit there and, and, and bang them out, mm -hmm. and which was really really awesome. Mm -hmm. But near the end, because uh, they they realized what I could do, mm -hmm. they. They, they gave me a, the soliloquy when he's talking to himself. Mm. I was supposed to do Gollum, the first half of that, the mm. Gollum shots. And at the same time, there was that ending shot where he's crawling. Mm. I was doing all the facial animations. So Jason Schleifer uh, was doing, he was, I don't want to say cleaning up the mocap, but mm. we had the mocap that was our guide. Yeah. And so Jason was looking at that mm. and cleaning out all the gack and because mm -hmm. Andy Circus had a different body type than Gollum. So yeah. when he crawled like floating thing, so mm -hmm. we were playing and then we realized it doesn't work, it has to be keyframe. Mm -hmm. Because of time crunch, Jason was gonna do the body and I did the, the facial animation for the first half and there, there's a part where he goes behind a tree and that mm -hmm. was a dissolve and um, I forget the other Adam I forget Adam's last name. I think I, I don't want to say yeah. his name or yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll say I'll, we'll, we'll update this. Okay. But uh, he did that second half, and yeah. so it was a effort. And it was in hindsight, it was great. You know, it was really cool. But yeah. we were working like hundred hour weeks. Like it would be Sunday night at two in the morning, and I'm just like, Shit. what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> and because of that, I got really bad carpal tunnel. So when I was on the third film, Damn. there were there was like three months straight where I couldn't. Couldn't physically stand. Like I, Damn, I, I would be cute to my eyes because the pain was so bad. Just because I was like this, you know, this desk, we were kind of crammed in the corner, and I was animating mm. away all these crazy hours. And that's where I really learned that you, as an artist, have to protect yourself and really mm. take care of your health. Mm. Because in animation, you get paid for the work you do. You don't get like live action a- actors; they get residuals. Directors get residuals. Mm. Sound residual. Animators, here's your check. Get the hell out. Hmm. So, if you're freelance, you don't even get health insurance. Yeah. This people teach you. So I didn't know, and I'm like, oh, great. You know, I'll work 100 hours. Now, if you ask me to do that, I'm like, no. Hmm. I'll work 60 hours, and then I'm done. And yeah. Then you have to hire more animators because my I only have one body, hmm. and if I wreck it, I'm done. And now my I you know I bat right now. I have carpal tunnel, so like I can't. Like I used to, mm-hmm. and that's purely because I allowed that to happen. I allowed it. Mm-hmm. I know I'm, I'm not by any way saying that my employer has forced me to do it. I was yeah. more than happy to do it. Yeah, it's yeah. my fault. I didn't, you know. So essentially, mm-hmm. you, you, you can't just be an animator. You have to plan your career and you have to plan your health. And mm-hmm. now when I go and yeah, you know, if I do freelance, I'll go in and I'll set my chair right, and I'll set my my monitor, and I'll bring in all my my Wacom tablet, yeah. and I'll totally make sure that it's ergonomically safe for me, and I'll even bring my chair. To, you know, before they would just give me this fold-out desk, and the monitor was too high, and the keyboard was too low, and, and now I'm like, no, I'm not doing that because, you know, I have, and they're like, okay, cool, yeah. I've never had an employer say, no, you can't do that. Everybody's like. I me, mean, I would understand, but that, you know, that's from experience. So yeah. that's kind of some of the stuff that I want to mentor people on. Is just yeah. that, you know how to how, how do you protect yourself in business? How do you um, plan your career? You know all those things that art schools just don't teach it. Yep. And and the cool thing about I mean this is what you know so well mm. is that Chris, you're an entrepreneur, mm. and I did entrepreneur man until about mm. three years ago. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure, that sounds weird. I don't want to be that. Yeah. And after I realize I am an entrepreneur. If I had known this when I was like 17, if I knew that I was an entrepreneur and I could have studied some of those those aspects, mm-hmm. my career would be 100% different. Yeah. Like, oh, right. I'd be I'd be much higher up. I'm, I'm not doing so bad now, but like, I, I, who knows? Yeah. So I want to teach people that. I want to help people be the best they can be. So. Awesome. Oh man, thanks. Now I'm glad that you. Uh, encapsulated everything because <laughs> now I was like going through all my questions like oh I think you've answered a lot of them already <laughs> um uh, well I was gonna ask you you know what do you wish you were told before you embarked on your journey as an animator but yep you've already answered that um okay what other opportunities do you think there are for animators um looking to break out onto the web because that seems to be where you know things are heading towards completely exciting to me yep is up up that's probably a year ago, really. Mm. Mm. You'd have to be in a studio. Yep. You'd have to be in Los Angeles or San Francisco or you know in a major city to work at like a commercial house. But if you want to be in a feature, you got to be in a major place. Yep. And so the internet and companies like Anaboom and mm-hmm. Mass Animation, mm-hmm. you can be anywhere. Yeah. In the world, and and what we're gonna see happen is that if you don't have well, first off, you need your foundation. Mm-hmm. You need to be a solid business person. You need to have intent. You need to have your brand worked out. You need to know that if a client hires you to do an animation and you say, "I will have it by Wednesday," mm-hmm. you get it, and you turn it in Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You don't. Have mm-hmm. If you have those, if you don't have that integrity, if you don't have that work ethic, mm-hmm. they're hire you every day. Mm-hmm. And up and down. Studios have required you to be there, and they're doing that. And I know because I'm in a supervisor and a director. I want my employees there because I want them to be accountable. I want to make sure that they're in their in their seat mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. But 
that's become very costly. So what we're going to see happen is that I can hire somebody in Antarctica yeah. $2 an hour because that's the cost of living down there. Yeah. Just as tax somebody here, but that person never would have gotten the chance because they didn't want to come to L.A. and you know, stay here and deal with traffic and all that. So now you can be anywhere in the world and have a family, and if you have if your, your entrepreneurial foundation set, mm -hmm. you're going to being able to use the internet to get jobs. Yeah. With Amboom is a great example of that. Yeah. Anybody can go on Amboom. Yeah. And it's just absolutely fantastic. So because of the bandwidth now, mm. because we're using now, mm. and and, and uh, other other um, websites like Odesk mm. or Plants or Guru.com, mm. you can go and make a profile mm. and set yourself up as an animator and start getting clients. You yeah. couldn't do that like two or three years ago. Yeah. So it's absolutely incredible. And also with software, you know, all the software costs have gone down. When I first started, if I went in Maya, mm -hmm. I think it was like grand. Yeah. more than that. It was 30, 40 grand for life. Yep. It's like you can get a, if you have a student uh, email address, mm -hmm. you can get a free copy. And I think anybody can get a free copy. It'll just have a watermark on it. Yep. But you can. Yeah. And if I want to buy a copy, mm -hmm. it's I think like a thousand or three thousand. It's like. It's very cheap compared mm. to what it used to be. So yeah. everything's completely changed now. And, mm. and, and also with information, you know, before you'd have to be in Los Angeles, like I said before, uh, like Cal RISD, mm. um, Sheridan. Yeah. But because of the internet, you have schools like Animation Mentor where mm. your teachers work at Pixar. They yeah. work at Apple. Yeah. They work at Did. Yeah. You that's all because of the internet, dude. Mm -hmm. That wasn't there five years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we had arts and spent a hundred grand mm -hmm. for four years. Now I can go online and, and spend well, twenty grand to go to. It was just a lot of money. Yeah. But I can spend twenty grand to go to Animation Mentor. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah. That's amazing to me. So mm -hmm. the world has completely changed, or in the animation and filmmaking world has completely mm -hmm. changed because of the internet. And now you have like like Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's and a lot of people are, are, you know, are getting upset at me for saying this, but it's <laughs> yeah. time because yeah. you don't have to be here anymore. Yeah. Because there's other countries and other uh, states, because I'm, I'm here in America, yeah. get taxes to go shoot them. Mm. So South Carolina, hey, come here, we'll give you a 35% tax rebate. Well, wow. everyone is like, well, I'm going to go there. I'm yeah. not shooting. I'm going to go there. Mm. So when I was... Previous two or three years ago, I was working. I was constantly booked. Like mm. 2010, mm. I had a week off. Mm. Wow. An entire year, I had one week off, and that was just because I was traveling to the next show. Yeah. Right. It was. Damn. Now, very there's very little jobs in mm. Los Angeles for previous artists because everybody's up in Canada. They're up in Vancouver. They're shooting, or they're over. They're over in Europe because Europe has great tax breaks right now. Yeah. So. You're not if you're not capable of relocating, mm. you're gonna be oh, so you have to almost be a nomad and go where the work is. Mm. So you need to know that and then the other factor is you can establish yourself online mm. to have that that stuff we talked about. Yeah. If you just go online like, yeah, I'll work freelance from home and you don't know what you're doing. Mm. And it's a small community. Animators, yeah. there's probably maybe 20,000 working animators in the world, mm -hmm. maybe 2,000 production people. Yeah. So, you know, every time I hire someone, I call up the people on their resume and say, hey, put this guy, is he good? And they're like, mm, done. You don't take them. Wow. So the people are great, they keep working, and everybody else just sort of falls off. And you'll get shot every now and then. We're like, mm -hmm. oh, we need this artist just fell through. We need one other person. It's crunch time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that guy, and I'll get that guy, and he's not like on point. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to bring him on again. So you get yeah. one shot. You better be prepared. You better be solid. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, okay. There are a couple things that I, you know, for, I guess I'll go first. There's obviously a concern for, you know, definitely in the West uh, for people outsourcing to other countries. You know, I've heard so many people say, oh, you know, you got to keep the jobs like here in Australia. They're like, you got to keep the jobs in Australia because if you outsource to India, then you're giving them jobs and, and, and whatnot. Um, what would you say, you know, um, to, to those type of people, 
uh, you know, who, who are worried about that, you know, about the, your own country. For me, I mean, I don't have much of an issue with it, but, you know, I've been hearing it more and more. I think that... It's a hard one. <laughs> we really have a global economy now. Yeah. And the barriers are broken, mm. you know, because of the internet. Mm. It's all going to be... And it's, it's still globally, you know, it's still the way you just described it now, but I think yeah. in two or three years, you're just going to want to have the best talent on your crew. Mm. You know, I don't care if you're in Antarctica. I don't care if you're yeah. in Finland. It doesn't matter to me. Are you solid? Yeah. So, yeah, if you're doing a feature or something, yeah. you, you probably you're going to have to bring your crew in. Like, you're down in Australia, and I've been offered a few jobs down at uh, in Sydney. Yeah. And, uh, I just don't want to move down there. Yeah. So, and on Lord of the Rings, it was pretty much 95% of us mm. were U.S. There were wow. very few guys on the crew because they hadn't done it before. Now I'm sure it's about, it's probably about 35, 40% New Zealanders. Yeah. When I was there, they had to bring everyone in because New Zealand, they didn't have that wow. experience. Now yeah. they do. I mean, now they, they've done it. And, uh, you know, and all, all, a lot of the people that I work with on, on, on Lord of the Rings, they mm. stayed in the top people at Weta. Yeah. Bringing in the New Zealanders, they're training those guys. I'm sure there's animation schools down there now, and I'm sure a lot of those people are, are going to Animation Mentor and they're able to get a job at Weta. Yeah. But, you know, and outsourced Canadian stuff, they're not outsourced. Here's the thing with character animation mm. is character animation is very contingent upon culture. Mm. They, in Hollywood style movies is vastly different than Bollywood films, which is very different from Russian movies, which is very different from you know Chinese movies. Yeah, it's different cultures. So I can't hire an Indian guy to animate on my U.S. speaking movie because the acting is going to be different. They're not going to get the lip sync. Now I could go down there and train them. Like I was offered a, a job to go down to uh, China and drag. So what's your crew like? And they go, well, they had that much experience. And I went, well, I'm not going to spend all my time trying to train people mm. when I shoot a movie. So they're like, well, and from you know other studios from America and you know Australia and stuff. And I said, okay, great. Why do it in China? Mm. You know. So mm. it comes down to business. Yeah. But you know, India. Uh, you're typically not hiring them to do the character animation stuff. You're hiring them to do the, the, the tedious stuff, the rotoscoping. Yeah. You're hiring them to do um, rendering, right? right? We'll light our scene here and we'll zip the file up, send it off to India, mm -hmm. and they'll sit there and monitor the renders and, and you know do the prelim comp and then send it back to the team here. So, you're which is great. And I don't have the time or the budget to pay somebody to sit there and do the painstaking stuff. Mm -hmm. The Indian, that that economy, they need it, mm -hmm. and it, it helps those people out. Yeah. So it really is beneficial. Yeah. So, you know, again, people that have that mentality of, oh, well, you're taking jobs away. I, I'd say you're not. Mm -hmm. No, and, and let's say you are. Mm -hmm. Go to and be a supervisor down there. You go down mm -hmm. there, and they'll pay you to supervise, and you can live like a king. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no. like Alice there with five servants, and be like, oh, I'm an animation super. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all good. Yeah, really. yeah. Man. You know, think of it. We're a community of artists. Mm. I don't care what culture you are. I don't care what what color of your skin. I don't care what language. Mm. You're an animator. I'm an animator. They're an animator. He's an animator. Mm. You know, we have to help each other out and. You never know, you know, you help people out, it's going to come back in spades. You never know when that guy that you just helped five years from now, he's, he gets money to make a movie and he calls you and says, I want you to be the animation supervisor. Oh, great, because you helped yeah. him out. So exactly. It's cool. Oh, man. Um, the, thanks for that. <laughs> I know a lot of people are going to, you know, benefit from hearing that too. Um, now, a, a couple other animators that I've talked to, you know, the concern has always been, okay, you know, uh, there's this opportunity on the web. Um, but I'm still concerned about stable income. <laughs> how have you, you know, how have you gone about, you know, dealing with that? Um, again, mm. times are changing, so we're in a transition phase. Yep. People I know that have steady work, 
they're signing the studio contracts. So mm-hmm. if you're, and then I've been offered that, but that's not my scene. I'm, I'm like this like lone wolf maverick. Kind of. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, if that is your scene, mm-hmm. then go to that studio, mm-hmm. kick ass, mm-hmm. make yourself such an asset that they'd be silly to let you go and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was doing studio stuff, like at, at Weta, they'd let people off after each movie and they kept me on because I, I made sure that I was an asset to them. Mm-hmm. You know, I made sure that I talked to the producer and be like, hey, how you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, I went out of my way to, to be personable and let them know what I was doing. So it was like mark itself within the studio. So this is another mm-hmm. thing that artists need to know. You have to be, nobody else ultimately gives a rat's ass about you. This is the truth. Mm-hmm. If you're marketing yourself, no one else is going to. It's not reality. Yeah. You know, yeah. we'll sit there very quiet, we'll do great work, mm. and then they're like, hey, Flashy, I'm talking and I'm doing interviews. That <laughs> guy, you know, they remember him because he's out there and he's, he's hustling. Yeah. You have to be up there to be an entrepreneur. Mm. So in terms of having consistent income, yep. establish yourself, Establish what you're good at. So I said I'm going to be good at character animation, and that's what I got hired to do, and they kept me on. And then I said, okay, I've done that. I've, you know, I've animated some of the biggest characters in the world. Check. Yep. I want to learn previs. I wasn't feeling solid on my camera work. I wasn't feeling solid on the filmmaking aspects. You know, I was branching out into live action. I said, I want to learn this stuff. So I did that for five years. You know what? You put me in any director out there, and I'll, I'll, I'll kick their butt. Just <laughs> awesome. Yep. I'm one of the top directors in the world, mm. and I've watched the movie, mm. and I know exactly what they're thinking, and I know where camera is going, and I know how editor. I've edited all my stuff, so I know how editing works. Yep. And I, I can, you know, I've got that. I got five years of experience because I said that's what I want to do. That's what my ultimate goal is. Mm. Back. In, so what would help me accomplish that well, learning previs learning mm-hmm. camera work sitting there with top directors and you know watch they, how they think mm-hmm. how they where, where they want to put the camera how they get covered so it, mm-hmm. it's a really cool thing so you need to just establish yourself in your niche and do consistent quality work mm-hmm. as you do it and you get hired by certain people certain producers stay in touch with them send them follow up emails hey Bob I just you know just finished another commercial mm-hmm. uh, here's why don't you get out Great, you're in Bob's mind. The next time Bob needs an animator, he's calling you. But now with the internet, you can establish yourself in your own brand. You can do, uh, you know, let's sit here and you find a really good comedian. Mm-hmm. Team up with them. In your local market, mm-hmm. you're, in, you're in Melbourne, right? Yep, yep. Say you find, uh, let's say there's a, there's an improv group. Yep. Improv group. Make some friends. Talk to them. Find a guy who's a comedy writer. Mm-hmm. Funny dude, a funny ass chick, mm. hey, why don't we team up, we're going to go, we're going to get some clients, we're going to do local ads online, mm. and funny cartoons, because everybody's doing, uh, marketing shifting, nobody watches TV anymore, it's all online, so yeah. you can get in, and you can do local, so let's say it's you and a guy who's a really great writer, mm. and you start doing uh, animated little uh, commercials, like when you go into someone's website, mm. the video, the marketing video, mm. everybody right now, Businesses, they need it. Your local dry cleaner. They could pay you a thousand bucks easy mm-hmm. to video, or you can even say, you know what, don't pay me. Mm-hmm. But every time somebody goes to your site, you give me a dollar. Well, all right, you're working on spec, but after a year, they're gonna have at least a thousand visitors. Mm-hmm. You got to do, you got paid to do your art, mm-hmm. do cool stuff that's exciting to you, mm-hmm. and you're leveraging other people. Let's mm-hmm. say you're not the best found somebody who is mm. and fine. so you know I don't think you're going to get rich being an animator mm. if you're going to have to be a baller in the hills you know with like models in your hot tub don't be an animator you're <laughs> in the wrong but if you want to do your art mm. artists typically are struggling artists mm. well now you know if you live modestly you know don't <laughs> But if you live modestly and you save up for a rainy day and you're smart about it, you can make a very comfortable living mm-hmm. being an animator, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Anybody can just have that the business sense and you have to know where the money is and you have to constantly be aware of the trends. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's pretty exciting. You don't yeah. have to be 
you know, you don't have to live in LA and work for Disney. You don't have to live in yeah. New York, the blue sky. You can be, you can be in, in uh, Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, have you come across, you know, the the concept of, of the micro niche? Um, and yeah, you know how, because these days it seems like, yeah, you know, you're talking about a transition period at the moment. And I think a lot of people, it is a time where a lot of people who do take that leap of faith are able to, you know, um, sort of, it's like a land grab, you know, people take their, finding their micro niches, taking it and, um, you know, setting themselves up. Uh, what are your views on that? That's what you just said. <laughs> Internet, we now have this opportunity and it's like, yeah, it is a land grab. The gate's yeah. open and everybody floods out, they stake their claim. Mm. And if you're doing that, you're going to miss the boat. And a lot of people are scared to do it. A lot of people don't even understand it. Mm. A lot of people that I know, the studio people, they're like, what are you doing? Like, what? Just come on. Come on, work at DreamWorks. You know, get, yeah. I'm like, guys, you're missing the boat. This is going to be, you know, I understand what, what their point is. But for mm. me, it's like, I like the excitement of the land grab. Mm. I like forging it. I like figuring this out. I like creating a community online for, for artists. Yep. Up, trying new things out and saying, "Hey, I did this and it worked," or uh, "Don't do that." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That lose your money and your time. So yep. that's exciting. But if you, you know, my goal is to try these things mm-hmm. and report back to to people who I'm mentoring and saying, "Yeah, this works. Do it. Trust me. Not everyone's doing it. Time is now." Yeah. And you know, maybe in two years, none of this will work. Mm-hmm. But it, but because it's the internet, the internet has basically connected everybody. And the internet's not technology. The internet is people. Mm. It's little. It's like the cells in your body mm. make up you. Mm. That's individual cell, individual people. And they make up the internet. Mm. So it's constantly It's yeah. constantly changing. You yeah. can't. Technology that works today in two weeks, it, it's different. Mm. Which is really, so if you're online and you're just doing your stuff and you're learning the new tools and you're constantly just rolling with it, mm. you stop. It's gonna crush you. You, you know, or, or it's going to leave. But if you just get in and you enjoy it and you, you do it, you're going to be fine. You can always move around. We have to understand how the internet works and how commerce online works, which is very important. Yeah. Um. You you mentioned in you know in, in us talking, you mentioned a lot about um storytelling. Um. Also, mm-hmm. you know, and the importance of storytelling. Um. It, it seems to not only just work in terms of animation, but also in the business world too. Um, seems like a lot of businesses, brands, websites—they're starting to tell more of their story. Um, yeah. And why do you why do you feel or think that is you know that it's making that surgence now? Well, I think it's always been. I think you're studying it. Nah. That's what you're. <laughs> yeah. But if I buy a white Jetta. You mm. suddenly you. People have white Jetta. <laughs> That's true. It's an awareness thing, isn't it? it must be. <laughs> oh, there's a very clear reason why Ronald McDonald's are mascot. They're telling a story. Mm-hmm. Well, kids like clowns. Come in. Bring your kids to McDonald's. It's a safe family environment. Now, it's not a complex story. It's not mm-hmm. like Star Wars. It's a hero's journey or anything. Yeah. But it's you know, a story about the company. Mm-hmm. So, telling, essentially, we, we're we packed. Mm-hmm. It took everything away from us. <laughs> yep. We have tents. What are we going to do for entertainment? Tell stories. On a campfire, and tell stories. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yep. So, advertising taps into that. The best ads, mm. tell stories. The best marketing tells stories, and the best films tell stories. Yep. You know, you Pixar is number one, mm. aside from two. <laughs> yep. Okay, <right>. yep. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sir. <laughs> Pixar's number one because they understand storytelling. They mm-hmm. understand their audience, and they really are respectful of that. Mm-hmm. Other studios don't. And I've worked on really bad movies. I'm not going to name any of them. <laughs> yep. but you can look at my and go, eh, no one's not so good. Yeah. Because filmmakers are talented. The screenwriters are talented. The studio mm-hmm. is talented. But sometimes it just doesn't work out because mm-hmm. you have a release date. We have various factors that are beyond your control, mm-hmm. and you'll get there. You know, I have a lot of director friends that I've seen this happen to. They get in there, and the studio hires them. And they're like, here's your script, and there's a gun to your head, and you know the script's not great. Everybody knows it's not great, mm-hmm. but there's a state. You just have to get it done. And there's a point where you're like, stop punching me. Let me just finish it. And mm-hmm. you don't even care about quality. You just want it to be done because 
there's a big, you know, there's an Uzi in there. Mm -hmm. And that happens all the time. Whereas Pixar, they're wise enough to say, we own, we understand that that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So let's build in safeguards. Mm -hmm. So a whole system built so that for the most part, mm -hmm. they have the time to really cook the story and get it good. Yeah. And they're on, you can listen to Ed Catmull. Any interview he does, he goes, all of our movies at one point were the worst films ever. Unwatchable turds. Wow. There was a point in Toy Story, which mm. is probably one of the best scripts ever, mm. was horrible. It didn't work. The character, mm. Woody, was a little dick. <laughs> yeah. It was unpathetic. Yeah. The whole pizza planet it was something else it went to like a mini golf course it, it had nothing to do with the rest of the story yeah. but stood that that it's a process and they fixed it hmm. and they said you know if we have to push I think they actually pushed production back on that they said you know we gotta fix this thing no they did that story too hmm. they said this does not work at all and we have to pull the plug and just re rethink it wow and a lot of studios aren't willing to do that yeah so that's Take some filmmakers with some balls, be like, you know what, you can fire me, yeah. but it sucks. So all the people who are known as iconic filmmakers, like the Ridley Scotts, the J.J. Abrams, mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg, all those guys, they they pretty much come from a, a screenwriting background, and they understand the stories, everything, and they fight for the story. Mm -hmm. If you watch a good movie, you're trapped with that movie because of the story. Mm -hmm. And a lot of animated films... They'll hire really great art direction and great special effects. But if the story sucks, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, go watch uh, go watch Jurassic Park 2. It looks <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah. It looks a hundred times better than the first film. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. It's horrible. Like, what is going on in this movie? <laughs> yeah. It's gross. But, Steve, no. Mm -hmm. No. It's because they had a release date. They're mm -hmm. paying everybody a lot. The universe is like, we got it. At this, we've got to release it for summer. Mm -hmm. So they did it. When you're, you know, when you're, I mean, back, you know, Iron Man 2 is another example. John Favreau is like, I don't want to do that, you guys. You're only giving me two years. I can't make a good movie in two years. And they're like, okay, well, we'll hire someone else. Mm -hmm. And we won't give you, it's probably got like 40 million or some insane amount. Of <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's like, yeah, it's not a good movie. Like, everybody knew that it wasn't going to be great, but they, they, they had a release date. Mm -hmm. they had, and they just didn't have time to tell the story. You know, I said before, I've been developing scripts with, with writers, mm. and these are years. Mm. They sit down for a day and write a script. It mm. takes a long time to tell the story. Mm. So the same when you're marketing for yourself, mm. don't just throw up a website and, you know, think about it. Mm. What is your story? What is your brand? What is your niche? What is your marketing? Mm. Have all that down. Have your foundation solid. Mm. Other you're going to end up redoing your website. You're going to end up getting higher jobs that aren't quite right for you. And then you, because you're not awesome at it, they're like, oh, that guy's not great. And they don't hire you back. When if you just said, you know what? I don't know how to composite. Mm -hmm. I'm a an character animator. And if you're going to try to sit me in front of After Effects and have me composite, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, if you're aware that I'm not going to be great and you're going to train me, that I hear a lot of artists like, yeah, I can do that. And then it's obvious that they can't. And then I go, I can't hire that guy back because I don't, I can't trust him. He's not up forward with me on what he can accomplish. So yeah. it's really about just being authentic and, and understanding your story so that you can, you can help other people tell theirs. Awesome. <laughs> That's like essentially like my whole, my whole mission statement. <laughs> uh, understanding your story. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, and and guess just closing up because I know your your time. Um, just what would your ideal future look like to you? Uh, my ideal future mm -hmm. is I do my mentoring. Yep. This summer and uh, everybody loves it and it makes a big difference in people's lives and because I'm I'm really retiring from being an animator. Yep. So I need to have closure on the first half of my life, really, yeah. right? So I want to wrap that up with a bow, mm -hmm. help other people out, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty selfish because I want to I want to make awesome movies. Mm -hmm. I want some talent on my crew, and I know that if they've gone through my training, they're going to be rock stars. They're going to be better than me. That's mm -hmm. what I want. And they're going to go off and make awesome movies. 
So when I'm an old guy and I'm like, oh, what am I going to see this weekend? I know that there's a bunch of good movies coming out. Because right now, most of them suck. And they suck. <laughs> yep. Um, so I want to be able to do my films and not necessarily features to think, oh, okay, that's not my class. I'm waiting for my five o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be able to do my films, but a few years ago, I'd have to go to a studio or I could find a private financier and you know play that game. Yep. Now, I have a community online mm -hmm. and I can crowdsource. Yep. I can release it on my own. Yep. This is just now beginning. People are just now starting this. Louis C.K., the comedian, he said, you know what, I'm going to pay to do my own videos, my own comedy special, and I'm going to release it online. Yes, he I crushed it. Yep, I remember that. Studios, like, they know that once artists figure this out, mm. artists in the world can create a following online and monetize their work. You don't have to pimp it out to a studio that says, oh, it's 10%. Mm. Thank you. Go. Mm. You can do it on your own. Yeah. You know, it's not as easy as that. Louis C.K. obviously has a lot of money. He outsourced the marketing and all that yeah. in production. But you can start small and you can scale. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal is to, to walk the walk and do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And then turn around and you know, everybody that I'm mentoring, I'll say, hey, I just did it. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And then they can do it. Artists out there, they're empowered to do their own thing and follow their bliss mm -hmm. and have a good life. Yeah, it's awesome. So that's, that's in, a, in a nutshell. Sweet. Thank you so much, Mike. It was a pleasure, and um, you. you'll definitely hear from me again. <laughs> so let me give the link to my site. So if anybody wants to, yes, you know, check it. It's successfulanimator.com. Yep. And I got yeah. that, so I'll put that in. Cool. Yep. And I reckon um, I'm going to be launching in probably July, like it's, it's there's a little wiggle room there, I don't want to paint myself up in a corner, but yep. this summer, coming 2012, <laughs> so it's, like, it's kind of bare bones right now, yep. but um, I encourage everybody to go and just start asking me questions, tell me what you want to learn, I'm, I'm an open book, yep. I don't pull punches, and the, I'm focusing most of my time right now on the Facebook fan page. So if you go to SuccessfulAnimator.com, there's a big Facebook button. Click on that, go to the page, like it, and you'll be part of the community and um, just start interacting with me. I'm on there all the time, talking back with people and you know, just making videos. Somebody's, how do you do a bouncing ball? Give me an hour, make a video, done. So nice. it's that. Sweet. Thanks a lot, Mike. <laughs>